Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we, after Jackie's uh, talk, uh, my, uh, our talk will be like uh, a kindergarten student. <laughs> uh, <laughs> besides, uh, you know, given that uh, Jackie's talk is so complete, ours preliminary. Um, what we want to do is to uh, tell you something of the preliminary results of a three-year uh, research project that we started at the beginning of the year. <clears throat> now, this is uh, the kind of the things that you usually see in Hong Kong. Uh, for example, you know, that's uh, the uh, SEMP uh, paper talking about the changing of our you know, urban landscape. Uh, you can see uh, uh, over time increasing the you know, dense and then this is the kind of uh, you know, the scenery you will see. And this is another kind of scenery. So besides uh, you know, so the big high rise, we have lower rise. Even both of them are of so-called high density. So what we would do uh, today uh, is to, first of all, problematize the whole issue of high density. In the problematization, uh, what we try to do is to interrogate with uh, some of the critical analysis and then uh, propose uh, one thing I think uh, Jackie has done the better than mine, the better than our, uh, I just simply call it a spatial story to high density, and then try to figure out what is the situation in Hong Kong. And then I, we try to relate it to the land with the regime in Hong Kong, and then we try to illustrate how the working of the you know, regime has, so to speak, reproduced uh, social injustice in the city by uh, examining uh, how you know, spatial practices of a particular household uh, living in high density. Now, there are a lot of studies on high density about Hong Kong, uh, but nevertheless, most of them treat high density as a thing, as a technical thing, and they you know, seldom look at it you know, if, from the perspective of a process. And uh, usually it's uh, treated as a kind of spatial container and, uh, within which we see all the features, all the so connected things about high density. Now, the issue I would like to you know, link it with the, you know, so to speak, the urban literature in general. Uh, this is, uh, I would argue, it has a lot to do with the so called Western urban study and planning literature. Uh, if we look at the literature development, it can be traced back to the development of Chicago School. Uh, Chicago School is developed on the basis of making a theoristic the, the, argument that you know, the, the modern city is the city in this modern, and then uh, where else are there is traditional. And in particular, if we look at it, uh, this Louis Wood's uh, argument that you know, high density, uh, which is the norm of uh, our cities, uh, is uh, basically negative. And this has led to people like uh, the symbol talking about you know, people living in a city to reacting with uh, developing that blast uh, attitude. If we look at the, the, the similar development in the town planning movement, we see it uh, uh, back in the end of the 18th century and beginning of the turn, uh, no, 19th century, sorry. <laughs> back at the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, we see how the field had developed you know, by, you know, the, so to speak, uh, uh, treating the social question and then, uh, so to speak, divided into you know, manageable the social issues. And thereby, for the, then further reduce the, 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 the treating all these issues by you know physical design. So in that sense, then you know from that perspective, most of them really see those you know, things as negative, high density, really negative, with all the overcrowding, and that is something that we should you know overcome because it endangers you know, public health. And thereby, you know, in the literature leading to the whole thing about your know, anti-urbanism, 
Now, of course, in saying that, you know, we should also say, you know, more recently there is another development, you know, you know, so to speak, swinging back the so-called compact city argument, but which is really based on, you know, the anti-urbanism. Now, what we would like to argue is that, you know, this kind of thing, uh, you know, seeing high density as a thing, you know, seeing as a container, you know, really, you know, these things couldn't see things uh, more dialectically. Uh, for example, you know, we try to uh, dichotomize that, you know, high density versus low density, you know, as uh, I think Jackie's uh, case has shown, even, you know, in the city center, uh, uh, we have the you know, people, low space people, we are doing color okay. So, you know, we can see all this, and, you know, the, so to speak, uh, also the you know, density shouldn't be seen uh, as a container. So, what we are arguing is that uh, it's important for us to, high, you know, to theorize, uh, you know, high density as a social process. Now, that's about, so to speak, um, what we can simplify called ma mainstream uh, theory. So what do we do, you know, you will look at the, what is the, so to speak, more critical analysis. Uh, we, we look at Lefebvre. Lefebvre uh, uh, to, you know, tried to complicate it. Uh, try to uh, look at it as a process, not complicated. Uh, look at it as a process, and then try to see things as a, so the three level thing. So we have the, uh, the level G, and then level M, and then the level P with individual. Now, what I would like to argue, what we would like to argue, is that you know, it even so cannot handle a lot of processes. Now, this is a typical you know, urban scape in Hong Kong. We have a building of this kind, and then, you know, building all things. So what is it, what does this say, so? You know, you, we are talking, I tried to delete this thing, yeah. Um, for example, in the such a, such a so cityscape, we're talking about if an individual in such a scape, he, you know, he or she is dealing with a lot of people, even within the house, and then even within a lot of houses inside the same floor and then inside the building. Uh, you know, these are you know, not usually you know, captured in the so-called more traditional literature. And of course, uh, when we talk then, you know, people would, they would talk about all this level, talking about the street block, neighborhood, uh, same district, same city, and then region. So in that sense, you know, the, what, I'm trying to, what we are trying to argue is that, you know, that kind of you know, sort of complexity is even you know, more so. You know, all messy is uh, your relational processes with uh, such a high density. And these would, uh, well, I would argue, with you know, even more you know, called, what we call varying spatial reaches. Also, in Lafab's argument, there's uh, regarding social justice is the argument of collective production of the, our social benefits, but we have the individual appropriation. And this kind of argument, I would argue, is uh, based on particular land ownership pattern. Now, in the case of Hong Kong, um, when we go, you know, to, to go about history, uh, went back to the so-called even in the Qing Dynasty, which is we thought, uh, you know, so to speak, uh, uh, at the end of the 19th century, we are talking about a completely different type of land ownership pattern. You know, we are talking about your know, relationship, your know, different topsoil ownership, subsoil ownership. And then, so we have uh, one is uh, right in paturity and uh, another paturity. And then even within the sub, uh, top soil, we are talking about individual. And this can be handled by ancestor trust as well. And then even for the subsoil, will be handled similar by individual and ancestor trust, maybe another ancestor trust. And so as, you know, you, even within it, there would be something called white deer and then red deer. So the whole complexity. You know, we should take note of, and these all these complexities they are built into our modern day. The second person that uh, we would like to interrogate is uh, this act of you know, spatial dialectical injustice. Uh, 
he argued that we shouldn't look at uh, things, we should look at uh, as processes, and these processes produce and reproduce uh, injustice. And he talked about two processes. One is the spatiality of injustice. That injustice uh, will have the spatial implications, spatial manifestation. The other one is injustice of spatiality, which is, you know, the spatiality is produced and produced, you know, through space. Now, this is a very good thing. But how about, you know, if we are trying to take it into high-density development, what are all these processes? So what we are just arguing uh, uh, is that, you know, at the end, uh, we really need to, to uh, a different conceptualization, high density as a social process, and then is, uh, so to speak, related to social justice issues. I think uh, you know, that uh, Jackie has done an, an excellent job. Uh, what I could do here is... Uh, I couldn't do much. Uh, only thing is, uh, besides uh, given the time constraint, what I would do is to just to simplify it. Simplify it. What I am just, just to say, you know, I am trying to, I have been working on trying to overcome the theorism that we encounter in the, world, so to speak, in the Western philosophy and all the things. So you know, I'm trying to, to, we try to bring in something more, you know, so to speak, continuity through change, how things are coexist and at the same time also change. And this would you know, allow us to look at all this multiplicity that you know, we have been talking about, and then interrelated space, temporal spatiality. And then, you know, if we want to do that, you know, I argue that you know, we try to you know, talk about all this uh, so-called spatial story. Uh, this is the one that uh, I have to deal with. So, uh, for simplicity, uh, you may argue that I am also the theoristic, but you know, I can't draw the map. You know? <laughs> I can't draw that diagram. The only thing is I can write out two so-called two dimensions. In a sense, you know, there is the time, and then there's the time, and then the space. Even with the time, we call for about two different: you know, the past and the present, and then you know, there and then here. You know, we are talking, we are interested in Hong Kong. Uh, nevertheless, the development of Hong Kong has its history and is very much related to the development of China. And then, of course, uh, you know, Hong Kong was the economy, and then thereby, you know, it relates to what had been happening in Britain. And then Britain has also, you know, changed over time. And that kind of thing, you know, has the interaction with it. And, um, I have been advocating that you know if we uh, stop here, then uh, we are extremely uh, naive, uh, given the history, because you know we have a lot more interaction, not only with our metropolis but others. I always use this example: in India. We have been you know in constant interaction with India, and thereby we have all the things. Uh, mind you, that we are exploring the possibility of trying to build up the. Uh, comparative urban research you know, by using that kind of opium, you know, trying to connect India and then Hong Kong and then Shanghai, and we're doing something, something other thing like that. So you know, this is, uh, you know, put the whole thing into you know, a, a, a better context. Now, you would like to ask you know, how to, you know, to see the individuals and all the things. So, we're talking about all this in the EU. Then that now I try to put it to three dimensional, you know, put in the so to speak the hierarchy. And then for example in the case of Hong Kong, we are talking about, you know, there are a lot of you know, so called agents here. You know, for example, urban authority and then some others and then were the planner and all the, the, the citizens. And all these were well, building the all the time, you know, they always what I would call is relating back. You know, drawing on our you know, memory, our experience in the past, and then we always move forward, and then at every, day, every time we always imagine. So it's this kind of you know, tension between you know, relating back and imagining for, for always the case, all the time. Now, in order for each of which you know, to carry on the work, you know, they have to you know, you, you develop, they have to adopt all kinds of strategy to move forward. And that would involve you know, the, uh, also the modalities of power. And these modalities of power uh, would uh, 
really change over time and space as well. And uh, whatever happened in the past, whatever happened there, uh, would, uh, uh, would affect what is happening uh, you know, now. Now, I, given the time constraint, I would just uh, simply go over this. And then, you know, try to see, you know, how these uh, could allow us to, you know, examine the uh, high problem, high density problematic. We argue that, you know, the thing is, you know, if we really want to look at Hong Kong, uh, we argue that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, starting the, you know, the day 60s, there was the, you know, the land with the run regime. And that kind of land with the run regime was really dictating how, you know, you know space uh, has been, you know, producing. What I would argue is, you know, at the end, at the end, you know, we would have the high-rise, high-density development. You know, this is one of the one of outcomes. Now, in this process, what is the, the so to speak, the beneficiary and then the loser? And usually, the, you know, the working class, you know, the all the grassroots would be to suffer because uh, the way the land with the region have been you know, emphasizing. Now, in a sense, what we try to do is to, in a sense, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, trying to go beyond a little bit of that, and then you know, given the critique. So what we're trying to see, see is how all this, you know, producing all the abstract space, and then that how the the the, the, uh, the, 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 the talking about the spatial dialectic or just have been you know acting and then reacting, and at the same time we try to emphasize what you know spatial practice of people. As I said, you know, I we have, don't have time uh, to go to this particular block. What we try to use is some preliminary findings of our uh, case studies to show how this, you know, everyday life practices have, you know, basically perpetuated the injustice produced by this uh, high uh, land redevelopment regime. I think, you know. Uh, uh, when I talk about this spatial story methodology and talk about you know, doing all these things, you know, Jackie will laugh, you know, you, you know, given the, her you know, talk just a moment ago, so elaborated. You know, what we are trying to do is to, you know, you know to try to, to look at all these individuals and then try to go through all this. Oh, I think the modern, all the modern machine is terrible. You know. It always displays what you have to try to say. So now, um, we, what we're trying to say, because the, our case study is in the Shamshui Po, the SSP, uh, we will, I would like to talk about, put it in the historical context, which I argue is so important uh, for understanding the high density and understanding the context within which uh, the, all the individuals that we interview uh, are living. The thing is, you know, Hong Kong was, uh, you know, in, under colon colonialism, Hong Kong was seated in stages, in stages. You know, first of all, uh, 1842, uh, under the Treaty of Nanking, uh, Hong Kong Island, and then, you know, was seated. And then, you know, the uh, tri Treaty of, Treaty of what? Uh, sorry, I forgot. Treaty of Nanking and then Shooting. Yeah, uh, Treaty of Nanking. So we, the important thing to treat is the boundary street. The boundary street, because some of it uh, was, all this was ceded to the British. Uh, and then in uh, 1898, uh, the whole, all this territory were, so to speak, lent to the uh, British. And thereby, you know, so the thing is, this area, so the stick the our study the SSP, you know, situated in the place where we have the you know the town and the country at the same time, and then also at the same time the transition. And this place was called you know, so to speak, New Kowloon. You know, I think starting in the 1930s. So, but the all this development, what would we see is. Then, you know, for example, in the 19, uh, 1918 report you know, regarding the particular area, you know, very clearly that kind of official would say the overcrowding is a menace to, to public health. So what is it, you know, the thing with all this development? 
Now, these are some of the photos of, about the uh, SSP, you know, uh, high density uh, development like this. And then due to the redevelopment, we have the you know, so-called high rise. And this is kind of the you know, scenery uh, taken from the rooftop. And this particular district is characterized by very different, you know, you know, from the Hong Kong as whole. For example, in 2010, medium household income is only 14,000, whereas the whole city is 18. And then, you know, in here, you know, 54% tenant, whereas the whole Hong Kong is 43. That means you no know, more tenants than owners in this particular area. And in this particular area, you know, it's very famous for the arrival of new immigrants. Uh, basically, for uh, the, the 10 years, it increased uh, from 14,000 to 20,000. Now, with this context in mind, so what we are doing is to, like, through our interviews, to our, you know, tracing of people, and then, you know, talk about, uh, I will show only one case uh, because of time constraint. We are talking about uh, Mrs. Wong's uh, immigrant family, uh, we are talking about four members, two parents, and two doctors. And then this uh, uh, is a building, and this is the inside part of this building, and this is the rooftop. And then Mrs. Wong's uh, family live in the rooftop. And this is, this is her house, and this is the inside, so, so to speak, living room, and this is, uh, this, this is, uh, 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 no, this is, this is what kind of room? This is living room. So this is the place where they put all the stuff. I think, so to speak, at the request of the uh, Jack P, we, we tried to you know, measure all this inside and then try to think out you know, what exactly uh, was it, uh, because that really affect the way the people interact and then use space. As I said before, we try to understand the uh, everyday life uh, so the, through all kinds of things. So, for example, you know, what I show is a series of so-called mantle maps uh, drawn by the, the uh, uh, thing. So this is a kind of mantle map uh, by uh, the wife. This is even simpler by the husband. And this is, this is the one by the uh, daughters. And so we also ask the, the, the wife uh, to uh, daily life and then how the time and all the things. We didn't have time to really detail it uh, in this presentation. So what do we see in this particular case? Basically, is what? Because of the unjust economic restructuring that we observe in the world, at the world level, that has hastened you know, that particular family to relocate from Xinhua in uh, the Pearl River Delta and then all the way to Hong Kong. Because of that, we can see you know, later we'll talk about all the you know, interaction with that. And also, you know, a lot of all these unjust processes, you know, forcing down, the, for example, you know, uh, unjust treatment migrants, you know, low facilities of services available to uh, a lot of migrants, and then force them to live in uh, the, the, our district. And uh, because of the family value, that highly value, you know, the family to live together, so you know, they have to look for a place that can accommodate for them, uh, and then through a series of steps, uh, end up living in the rooftop. And then also the you know, stigmatization. You know, Hong Kong nowadays we have so-called you know, comprehensive social insurance. Nevertheless, for a lot of families, they try to stay away from it because you know they said that once they have taken up their children, will be looked down upon by others. So because of that, you know, the you know the. Uh, instead, they, you know, they, they, try, they try to use whatever from the, the service jobs, both of the husband and the wife. And so basically what we can see you know, for the, your daily activities, basically within the short walking distance from home. And even for the, the limited the disposable income, so what is happening is usually when they want to spend buy things, they would go back to the mainland to buy. And then whenever they have holiday, they go back to the mainland. So in the end, what do you see? You need to, to try to dot all this in the map. Uh, basically, this is the home. And this is the, the school of the elder doctor. This is the nursery school. 
of the uh, uh, younger daughter, and this is uh, uh, the place that they sometimes go. This is a uh, uh, shopping mall, and this is the market. The market is larger than that. And uh, for the husband, the job is somewhere outside, and for the uh, uh, wife, the job is somewhere here. So basically, this is you know, their map. This is the place. This is the, the working distance. So what do we see? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So what do we see? We're basically a very thin uh, social network. They have very little idea of so, you know, so SSP. Uh, they have no spatial imagination of it, and neither do they have you know, some kind of you know, utopia. What is it? So they live there as long as uh, you know, they, so to speak, allowed to to live there, and uh, so this more recently, the, the wife managed to get a janitor job within a primary school, and so in a sense that the job is much more stable. And so you know, the, from that, you know, you can see you know, all these people living high desert. They have no intention, and no desire to challenge the unjust system that we have. Now. Um, this uh, everything changed uh, uh, more recently you know, with the initiating of the uh, redevelopment. You know, this uh, place, uh, uh, the boat building, is going to be developed uh, by the um, inviting the URA to uh, come in to, to develop. And so, you know, the system is, you know, we, is a part of the land redevelopment regime. We see what uh, this process only all, you know, legal, only owners, those are legal owners. You know, they live in the rooftop, which has no legality, although they pay the uh, uh, electricity bill, they pay all this, and recognized by the government. Nevertheless, they, they have no legal status. And so, you know, they will be soon become homeless. So what I have been doing, we have been doing is, you use one case study to show how that kind of you know, the injustice and then produce and reproduce in a so-called high-density setting. Uh, given time constraint, uh, let me uh, summarize. Uh, what we argue that you know, high density must be seen as a social process, and is a process that produces and reproduces injustice. We have adopted the spatial story approach uh, trying to elaborate that kind of spatiality. Uh, the spatiality uh, was very much uh, produced and reproduced by, by the land redevelopment regime, and it is the so-called classroom who is badly, badly hurt by this spatiality. And in doing so, what we have seen is the uh, over time the regime has been you know perfected over time. So I will stop here. Thank you. Now we have time for some questions for Pingxing and Joanna. Any questions or comments? In fact, I have uh, many questions. <laughs> 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 but I want to just, um, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Um, uh, but I was, um, I was thinking about uh, uh, the, policy, the Chinese policy of urbanization, um, which uh, takes the exactly opposed that view, that high density development is the answer to uh, all the problems we have. Uh, the same kind of policies are, uh, have been, of course, adopted in Vietnam as well. Um, so it's an active uh, politics of um, of promoting high density development, and they see a, a completely different uh, world than you do. Um, I'm not sure how to end up with a question here, but uh, <laughs> it's just. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, there could also be some truth in uh, in uh, uh, that the answers could lie in some ways in the high density development but it seems as you you see only um, the problematic sides of it um, or uh, am I not understanding in a sense you, you can see it allows the 
So it's called the grass without any class to live there to survive. So you consider that negative or positive. Nevertheless, it has the you know, perpetuate the negative in that sense. You know. But because they are, they they could live. Uh, at least in the in the interim, you know, they they never thought of you know, really challenging the system. And then in that sense, you know, that perpetuates. Uh, and what would challenging the system mean? Now we talk about, you know, the whole way of, for example, nowadays we debate a lot about what the uh, current administration uh, tried to um, persuade the people of Hong Kong that uh, what is a problem nowadays is the limited supply of land and housing. Now, if we argue this way, it's this is not the case. The issue is not the case. Simply the issue is, you can argue that, you know, a lot of resources, for example, I, I tried to develop that argument. Um, I call it double exploitation. But you know, that's a very preliminary. First of all, we as taxpayers, of course, including uh, Hong Chi and then uh, uh, Jackie, we pay the tax, and these taxes are used to service the land. Service the land, but the, so to speak, the, once the land is produced, it's uh, under the hand of the developer. And then, so to speak, uh, the, that would be appropriate, much more by the developer. First, point, first exploitation. Second exploitation is, you know, why does a particular unit or particular area demand that high level of rent? Because of we, Hong Chi, we, Bill Jackie, we, we move around every day and then we build up the thing and then the, what the, uh, Jackie had been talking, making the, the, the whole area lively. Now that kind of thing uh, is captured by the developers. They, they can argue the, for higher rent, higher, higher cost. You know, we were, in a sense, we are too, 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 too exploited in those sense. So it's that issue that is so central to Hong Kong that is problematic. Not the limited supply of land, not the limited supply of housing. So if we, we really want to change the system, not you know, agreeing. You know, we have one issue here. Uh, we are fighting the university. It's the, uh, the plot of land just next, next door to us. You know, we are fighting to try to retain it, and the government wants to, to, to you know, build high rises uh, there. Uh, because on the argument that you know, there's a limited supply of land, we have to do it. And then you know, that is actually, so to speak, killing the whole society. And now uh, Joanna and I uh, are doing work uh, to see how all this is so-called what we call GIC site. So called the government institution and uh, community uses. All these sites, you know, are in the process converting into building all these, uh, you know, expensive uh, apartments. I was, Sorry, I have I might have said too much. I'm allowed to uh, ask one more thing, uh, or I don't know if this is a comment. Um, I'm thinking also that uh, another dimension of understanding the new redeveloped cities and so on is also to bring in the dimension of control and supervision. Uh, this, I think this is uh, something also a possibility for an authoritarian state to, uh, or an authoritarian uh, government to reproduce uh, the political regime. So building uh, new technological uh, possibilities for supervision in the cities. And uh, I think uh, this is probably also part of the sustainability strategy for the political regime, both in Vietnam and in China. Um, in Hong Kong too. To, uh, so it's also connected to the political regime question, uh, how the political regime is uh, um, attempting to reproduce itself. Yes. Uh, so in my, one, my, my diagram, I show, uh, show how you know, different so-called agents you know, try to use a different modality of how to pursue what they are you know, trying to do.
Face what? Premiums, they pay some premiums. No, not in the case. Well, like corporation that. tax. You know, the Hong Kong government has resisting from raising the corporation tax. And the Hong Kong corporation tax is one of the lowest in the world. There's no yeah, capital gain tax. No, no capital gain tax. Uh, I, I no. Now we are talking about capital gain tax. The reason yeah. uh, introduction of so-called okay, uh, is I, 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 <laughs> you know, uh, spicy policy. I, I, I what is the struggle with? Because your your rich presentation has so many questions and comments. But I, I want to comment briefly on this. Uh, your attack against Western theories, because there are three puzzles I, I don't quite understand. So mm. first, why, how can you argue that these uh, high-density theories are Western theories? Because if you look at the density in, in Europe, it's completely different scale. So I think that's the first puzzle. The second, I'm not quite sure whether Worth and Simmel regarded density as a thing, because they were interested in mentalities and Who? social... Situation. Uh, I know a little bit of the, the, the Chinese. And uh, that's the system. What I am arguing is that, you know, what is the present? Unless we have you know, to, you know, to look at the history, how the historical development. And this is usually ignored. Ignore. And um, ignore by what, what is the, you know, for example, like they usually use you know, colonial or whatever, you know, that's simply like that terminology. So I'm arguing that, you know, because of that, and I, 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 I want to show is that the, the SSP, that particular district, is special in a sense because of that kind of thing, it developed slowly over time. Uh, regarding the Ch Chicago school, yes, symbol, you know, talk about symbol, m m m much more complicated. But simply, the symbol try to, you know, so to speak, look at it and then see, you know, because people, you know, it, it all this high density interaction and then they, they develop that kind of social attitude. In a sense, you know, the, that kind of, you know, easy, you know, start of it, then develop. Yeah, we see other things, so you have a lot more complication. Yes, uh, in that sense, I try to push my point and then try to simplify a little bit. Uh, but uh, on the whole, I, I think uh, I'm still all right. I have a lot of discussion. I have one question. Uh, you can discuss with Winsing over lunch. <laughs> 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 or after the presentation, I'm getting a little bit happy because I'm going to be time for the next presentation. And it's by Professor. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how. I'm not sure I can pronounce your name. Professor Brandon? Okay,